May I please draw your OC? Reblog this message if you encourage anyone that wants to draw your OC to do so. No need to ask for permission in advance. Go for it. Draw my OC. If you want, I'll even give you reference posts. Go to town on it. You are welcome to draw my OC and surprise me with the result. Seriously. In fact, I encourage it. I will proudly display whatever it is you submit to me regarding my OC. There is a chance that I will squeal about it for several days. Even if you feel you aren't good at whatever artistic adventure it is you do, please feel free to submit it to me. I want to see what you have done. I have people drawing my OCs already. Fan art makes me so fucking happy. If anyone here wants to, fucking go for it. Yep, uh, this video is me telling all of you that you are more than welcome to make art of my OC. Cause I love them. God, I hope the future is kinder. I hope that they have it figured out better. I hope people don't have to work so much for so little. I hope there's time to explore passions and interests and skills. I hope people get the support they need. I hope the people from the future look back at our problems and are bewildered by them. Like, I'm confused by how they used to put poisonous lead in makeup. Just, how did they ever think that was okay? How did they live like that? I hope the cruelties and hidden poisons of our world are one day so distant that they are used as fun facts in trivia games. Please be kinder, future. Being uncomfortable becomes easier when you realize that's literally the point. It's like working out. If you work out and it becomes easy for you, you already got all you could out of that workout. Your body adjusted and is strong enough to handle it now. You're not improving anymore. That's why you up the ante with harder workouts, where you're uncomfortable and not quite strong enough yet. Because eventually you will be strong enough. But if it's not a challenge, there's no gain. And that's exactly how it is with situations out of your comfort zone. The more you put yourself in them, the easier they get. But that in-between phase where you're struggling is still completely valid and okay and natural. It's what's supposed to happen. It's what's going to change you as a person and you should keep doing it. I should be outside. No, there are chores to do. Why aren't you socializing? I need to go home and work on my portfolio. What are you doing? Go exercise. Time is money, you hate this anyway. Sorry for this relatable shit, my anxiety has been a bitch lately. How millennials became the burnout generation, summarized in six panels. Sometimes a post calls you out, and sometimes it calls you out by name. This post not only called me out by name, it used the middle name for good measure. Burnout, anxiety, executive dysfunction, true Terry stories, the endless Sisyphean torment of washing dishes. Running can make you healthy, but god at what cost. This game has one weird trick that makes the choices matter. Telltale hates it. For the first time in my life, I felt like I had friends. I want to kiss all the characters, including the skeletons. Came for Goat Mom, stayed for Goat Mom, quit the game forever for Goat Mom. Goat. This game lets you pet all the puppies, and it's a very good game in terms of dogs. 10 out of 10 would woof again. If this game was a dog, I would devote my life to petting it. Infinity out of a possible 10. You should totally play this if you enjoy Earthbound, Mother, similar genre of old school RPGs, amazing soundtracks, internet references, severe emotional trauma, crippling paranoia about everything you've done and will potentially do in your miserable span of existence. The Steam reviews for Undertale are golden. Fellas, if your game has a simple style, an emphasis on building, esoteric crafting recipes, a leveling enchanting system, traveling through different dimensions, a meta-narrative, and frog breeding, then that's not your game. That's Homestuck. What in the sweet and sour fuck is Homestuck? Oh, you sweet summer child. Relationships are hard work is more about, like, figuring out the logistics of merging two lives in a way that we both feel seen and given equal space in. It's about the difficulty of allowing yourself to become fully vulnerable in front of another person, or how hard it is to wait to be able to spend quality time with one another because life has just gotten so busy. It's not, we argue about the same thing every week and this topic is a clear drain on our relationship and hindering us both from being actually happy, 
Or like, we clearly aren't compatible, but are in too deep, so we have to keep forcing it because otherwise it will all have been a waste of time. Oish, I really feel that. When a student copies an essay online instead of writing it, and then painstakingly changes every word to a synonym until the text no longer makes any sense, call that the ship of thesaurus. Any educator who doesn't feel this on a visceral level has never had to experience the psychic pain of reading the phrase, unused York City. I've been to the city, it is very used. I think it's so funny that Tumblr had Twitter polls for a week, created every sexy man or entity contest we could in that time, got bored with that, devolved into dataist baking recipes and art pieces, and then swerved into creating complex mathematical experiments in order to prove laws of statistical analysis and human psychology. Great work, everyone. No notes. We should be able to add polls to other people's posts so that everyone can vote on who's winning an argument. Should we really be able to do this, though? I say yes! You can add a second poll, too. This is far too much power for a mere commoner to wield. <laughs> second poll. Oh, they really added PvP! <laughs> I told my roommate that I had brain worms, and they were like, you need a brain berm for your bird brain. As if that made any sense whatsoever. Brain bird for bird brain on account of brain worms sounds like some sort of new Ouroboros. Bird eats worms to ensure the brain maintains working condition, but the brain will continue producing brain worms simply due to existing, continuing to feed the bird that resides within the bird brain. And should the bird stop eating the worms, it will die, and then so will the brain due to being overrun by worms. This is too much for my worm-infested brain to comprehend. Reasons why I like Tumblr. None of my family is on here. Barely anyone in my life knows the website even exists. Employers won't ask for my Tumblr handle. Website doesn't post a timeline with laser-targeted ads about me. Non-algorithmic feed. It lets me read shit in the order it was posted. Can't see other people's follower counts. Big and small blogs interact mix better. No one is idolized. No one, absolutely no one, can manage to make money off us little shits. This. Basically all of this. There are many other good reasons in the notes, too. This is why I feel most at home on Tumblr. Chillin' on a Saturday night. Calm down, Jojo. You're right, I am looking a little stiff here. I should try to relax. You call that chillin'? Everyone knows the best way to relax is with a good book and a warm drink. I don't know, man. Sometimes I like just relaxing on my laptop. Get on my level, boys. Unfortunately, to get on your level, I need a boat trip to the Mariana Trench and a pair of Cinderblock shoes. That's gotta be the sickest burn I've ever read, holy fuck. This post appears once every million years. I kept hoping someone else would one-up me and I'd have to escalate even further, but nobody has. I don't think it's possible to one-up you. Most normal relaxing time in Ohio. Into the Spider-Verse. This post is going to be 10 this year! guys be mad if I started calling mint fruit? No, so so did ooh, mint is a leaf! My favorite little fruit. It's an herb, it has leaves, and you put it on ravioli! You put mint on your ravioli? Then explain the green stuff on this! Basil! Stop saying it's parsley, I don't fucking put parsley on my ravioli! What's parsley? This is parsley. This is basil. And this is mint. Which one are you putting on your ravioli? It's all leaf? Tumblr having high volume arguments in which all parties know jack shit about the topic is peak humor for me. Happy to announce that my latest bout of dreaming about Tumblr induced me in the conviction that Tumblr had just instituted a pet button that appeared below all pictures of an animal so that Tumblr users could pet the animal. The most notable use of this was a post with a picture of a porcupine that had a thread of users below it saying, Ouch! Staff, you heard him! I think my favorite jokes are the ones that aren't even all that funny until I was an adult, and now they're fucking hilarious. I'm not even talking about the dirty jokes. 
I'm talking about in Finding Nemo, where the sharks are having fucking AA for fish eating. Remember that shit? I am a nice shark, not a mindless eating machine. If I am to change this image, I must first change myself. Whoever thought of that? That was brilliant! Or what about that time in Shrek 2, where Shrek and Donkey infiltrate the castle pretending to be union workers? Little me didn't give a shit about unions, but big me is remembering Shrek going, It's okay, buddy, we're from the union. And the desk worker secretively, We don't even have dental. And Shrek just shakes his head and looks at Donkey like he can't believe this shit and goes, They don't even have dental. What the fuck? I'm dying of laughter. <laughs> Who comes up with this shit? I kind of just realized that Jessie from Team Rocket forms a fucking R with her hair and body. Why did it take me over 10 years to realize this? James, you little shit, not you too! I never realized this until you pointed it out! Holy fucking shit! They love doing this, by the way. Here's a small compilation. I just thought they were doing a little gay pose. I didn't realize they were making an R! Where did all my motivation go? To me. Thank you very much for giving it to me. Normally I am very drained and tired, but now I feel like I could run a marathon and bit without stopping. Thanks. Glad to help. Now give it back. Thanks, but no thanks. It is mine now. Take someone else's. Can I have some, please? No, I need it. I'd say I'd give it back, but I have stuff to do. Maybe later. Fine, fine, you can have it back. It's not like I'm doing anything productive but scrolling Tumblr. But only some of it. My girlfriend's edition. The weirdest shit you see. What is occurring? No offense, but where are the male porn bots? And where are all the gods? Where's the streetwise Hercules to fight the rising odds? Isn't there a white guy to clutter up my feet? Late at night I scroll and I scroll and I reblog a few memes. I need a man whore! I'm holding out for a man whore till the end of the night. He's gotta be fake, with no reblogs or tastes, and he's gotta be blocked out of spite. I need a man whore! I'm holding out for a man whore who's been causing strife. He's got a beguile with a stolen profile. And he's gotta be on Tumblr Live, on Tumblr Live. List of mundane things that feel like ancient human rituals. Cleaning or wiping your bare feet. Breaking off a piece of bread and handing it to someone. Putting the weight of a basket on your hip or head. Eating nuts or berries while hunched over close to the ground. Seeing something startling just out of your line of sight and very quickly stepping or leaping onto a larger object to get a better view. Cupping your hands into running water to wash your face. The unanimous protection of a baby or child in a public space where women are present. When an elderly woman laughs and grips your forearm tightly, may I add? Touching someone's face with the back of your hand to see if they have a fever. Stopping to watch animals moving in groups. Geese, fish, horses, butterflies, bees. Helping an elderly person to walk or sit. Telling stories around a fire. Huddling together for warmth when it's cold. Marveling at sunlight through leaves. Wondering at the brightness of a full moon. Bringing food to sick or grieving families. Ahem. Okay, here goes nothing. Oh golly gosh darn boy, I diggity doggone hope that nobody submits one of my posts to PM Seymour or Bettina Levy. That would be just awful. Looks around. I would be so excited if this happened, not gonna lie. I also don't think I'll become Tumblr famous for it because I post so infrequently and almost only post niche things. In case this does get into video, hi! PM Seymour VA, Bettina Levy. Tumblr. Congratulations, you made it into a Bettina Levy video! Looks like I won this race, PM Seymour. I've decided to start a fight. Anyways, geometry sucks. Algebra, best math. Counterpoint, all math sucks. Counter, counterpoint, all math rocks. Did somebody say math rocks? Shoves those fucking things straight into my mouth. This reads like a 10k heritage post. Someone here needs to deactivate. I'm not deactivating without an IRL duel first. 
My favorite thing in the world is responding to my hateful messages and seeing how fast I can change their mood. Shut the fuck up and go back the fuck wherever you came from then, pussy. You accepted the request. You look really nice in your icon. What do you use to whiten your teeth like that? I'm pretty nice usually, just a little sick right now. My girlfriend does it. I don't really prefer it, but I like the pick. I like your facial hair. Wish I had some. I use activated charcoal capsules. Pull them apart and brush with them. It looks, tastes weird, but works wonders on polishing teeth. Where does one get those? Any drugstore, like CVS. Appreciate it. Well, sorry to have been rude, man. Have a good night. Sleep well, homie. Love you. Love you too, good night. Love you too, good night. Oh my god, the 360! There's a kid annoying his exhausted mother in the row next to me on a small plane right now. So I asked him, have you ever thought about how weird it is that sounds existed for billions of years before ears evolved to hear them? And now he's looking quietly out the window. Children can have a little existentialism as a treat. How do draw good? Fill 14 sketchbook. Bad stuff is good stuff because you made stuff. Do you like sparkle? Draw sparkle. Draw what makes your heart do the smiley emote. Remember to drink lots of agua or else bad time. Don't stress, friend. All is well. Your art is hot like potato crisps. Don't let anyone piss on your good mood, amigo. If they do, eat them. This fucking post. I finally found it. How can you not be angry? I am angry, the werewolf said. But unlike you, I don't have the luxury of showing it without being called a monster, without someone taking it as a sign of proof that I need to be put down like a rabid dog, that I'm just like what the stories tell you. But everyone gets angry. That's human. Up until the point when you're not human. Such a wonderful metaphor for anyone othered by society. Yup. That. Louder. Will you marry me? A marriage proposal. Will. You. Marry. Me. A foursome proposal. Will. You. Marry. Me. Cavewoman Mary helps Will recover from his amnesia. Will. You. Marry. Me. Will's time-traveling partner. Will. You. Marry. Me. Asking your clone about their life plans. You know how kids tend to subconsciously adapt the mannerisms of their parents? I wonder how far back that stretches. Do I laugh like my great-grandfather because that's the way my grandma laughed and my mom copied her? Does the way my dad make comedic sounds when he's driving actually originate with a distant uncle 200 years ago who made funny noises in the horse-drawn cart because it made his niece laugh? I wonder which of my little mannerisms came from ancestors long past, and I wonder which of mine will echo in family descendants long after I'm gone. We are echoes. Another verse to be song again, in a different way, to the same tune. I'm a love letter. Your heart is a muscle the size of a rat. SpongeBob SquarePants! Your brain's about four times the size of a cat. SpongeBob SquarePants! Your lungs can hold 5.5 liters of air. SpongeBob SquarePants! The soles of your feet can never grow hair. SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants! SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Date of origin, August 9th, 2018. The unbridled joy of seeing this pass by again, spotting the little red heart like, ah, uh, my old friend, SpongeBob Human Anatomy SquarePants. Are you busy, Friday? That entirely depends on the rest of the information you're about to give me. Deadass. The social cheat I've learned for this is to say, I have to check my calendar. Why? What's Friday? This says, maybe, without saying maybe, and giving you the option to make up a doctor's appointment you forgot about, or reschedule one you didn't, depending on what they say. It's an amazingly powerful sentence for my autistic and ADHD ass. It gives me the ability to judge my social spoons, as well as communicating that, hey, I might have forgotten something, it's not you, it's me, in a very non-offensive way. I have to check my calendar. Why? Thank you for this! Why does my caladium act like she is starving for light? Hang on. 
Look at that. The leaf is staring right into the lamp, full in the face. Every day, I have to reposition the damn lamp because she's dead set on sticking her first leaf right the fuck in there. And I don't want her to burn. But every day, I come home from work and she has closed the distance anyway. Bestie, please cooperate with me. I finally caved and moved her to the windowsill, but this has clearly not satisfied her because she still presses that leaf right up against the glass. Apparently, instead of actually growing new leaves in order to increase her light intake, she's decided that these are perfect conditions to flower in. Baby girl, you have one leaf, please. Never thought I'd see a plant with unhealthy coping mechanisms. <laughs> My favorite character in Beauty and the Beast is this dresser waiting to fuck up a villager with a baseball bat. Beat our guest. Beat our guest. Slam a bat into their chest. Stuff a rock into a sock and turn their face into a mess. Hook their eyes. Hit their nose. Drop a hammer on their toes. Hack their hand off with a hatchet, or just grab a brick and smash it. Break their arms, break their face, pop a socket out of place. Unleash all the hidden fury you've suppressed. They'll find it hard to plead when they profusely bleed all down their vest. I don't jest, they're too toothless to protest. Beat our guest, beat our guest, beat our guest. TV shows get this idea that high school is constant drama. Nothing even fucking happened to me in high school. I'm now remembering that my school got a Slurpee machine and then had to get rid of it two weeks later after someone poured toxic chemicals into it that they stole from the science lab in an attempt to poison the entire cheerleading squad, so like, maybe I was just boring. Not every day you find out you're a background character. Click read more to get a mysterious achievement. Keep reading. Achievement unlocked. A truthful reminder. You are more loved than you'll ever know. It's hard to believe sometimes, but you are important. Just as important as anyone else. You, reading this, you're important to me. Because you took the time to read this and look at what I had to say. I may be a friend or a stranger, but just know that what I'm saying is true. You mean something to someone. You mean the world to someone, and this will be here if you need to hear it again. Actions. Read again. Pass along. Oh my goodness, this is so wholesome! The two fundamental ways to be a human actor in a Muppet movie. I am a fucking actor, and so are they. I don't care if they are made of felt and pipe cleaners. I must act alongside them just as if they were Sir Lawrence Olivier himself. This is the Michael Caine in a Muppet Christmas Carol approach. This is a Muppet film. Therefore, for the next hour and a half, I am a Muppet. This is the Tim Curry in a Muppet Treasure Island approach. Both approaches are equally valid and equally hilarious. They're Muppets, I'm a human, and kindly untie me from this chair. Jack Black approach. How's the writing going? I'm glad you asked. My room has never been cleaner, and I've decided to take up baking. How's the cleaning going? Thanks for checking in, I've written four chapters! Seriously though, everybody relating to this? You're doing so great! This is an excellent habit! You've successfully harnessed the power of procrastination in ways that keep improving your life in your avoidance time! That's huge! And sometimes the best thing for a block is to let your subconscious have at it for a while, uninterrupted by the constant poking. Treat your brain like a small child. Treat it with kindness and give it something else to do so it stops trying to drive you mad. Thinking about my optometrist who was treating my eye infection and said, if it hurts, you can rinse your eye with boiled water. Look at me, look at me. I want you to understand that I mean water that has been boiled and has since cooled down, not boiling water. Do you understand? Like, I'm so grateful for this man ensuring that I wouldn't destroy my eyes by pouring boiling water in it, because it is an adequate assessment of my intelligence. This is a man who has experienced the public. <sighs> What'd you say about me? Hold my flower. Kick his ass, baby, I got your flower. I found it. The original post. I found it! This should have the opportunity to be on everyone's blog. 
tour guide voice. And here on the left, ladies and gentlemen, you see one of the posts before everyone went batshit crazy. World Heritage Post. Everyone here is dead. There needs to be a bad romance movie about someone falling in love with their Tumblr mutual. It's called The Feeling is Mutual. Soda Butch out here being funnier than me on my own post. I think everyone who enjoyed this post back in 2021 should know that I'm now dating the person that inspired it. The feeling was mutual. Vermont was the first of four states, along with Maine, Hawaii, and Alaska, to ban billboards. Driving on I-89 in Vermont is actually beautiful. You deserve to be able to travel freely without having your vision assaulted by advertisements. All states should be this way. This is gorgeous. I think there's a lot of charm in saying a word online and then putting the emoji that corresponds to it right after. Like, today I saw a kitty! That's just very pleasant, ain't it? Made some coffee! True! Love! About to shower! And then sleep! Saw the horrors today. So true! Rats! Love those things! The tags here are excellent. Good job, everyone! Do you ever think about how a series of tiny choices like, I guess I'll watch that show, can like totally and entirely change huge aspects of your life? The amount of my daily life that I can directly trace back to deciding to read a particular webcomic back in 2008 is astounding. Accounts for perhaps half my social life at this point through various causal effects, butterflies flapping their wings indeed. One of those moments where you absolutely feel the kinship of all human beings everywhere and at all times. A typical complaint fielded by Babylonian administrators. I am not getting water for my sesame field. The sesame will die. Don't tell me later, you did not write to me. The sesame is visibly dying. E.B. Illibrat saw it. That sesame will die, and I have warned you. As per my last clay tablet, CCing E.B. Illibrat on this one just to make sure we're all on the same page. This consultation with my viziers could have been a clay tablet. The problem with being a creative person is I want to create all the things. I want to draw a little drawing. I want to write a fic. I want to write a book. I want to paint with watercolors. I want to paint with oil paints. I want to animate. I want to make something out of clay. I want to sew a dress. I want to play a song on the ukulele. I want to play a song on the cello. I want to play a song on the harp. I want to write a song. I want to write a musical. I want to make a webcomic. I want to make a video game. I want to do everything, but I don't have the time or money or motivation. Been there, still haven't done all that. Life actually gets better when you leave the house consistently, by the way. Like, I'm serious. If you don't know where to go, just wander. Go to the store and don't buy anything. Go to the library just to sit and do whatever you are going to do at home. Go to a park and just walk around or sit outside for a bit, weather permitting, of course. Just put some headphones in and walk around the block a couple times if you really have nothing else to do. Just getting a bit of air and change of scenery is so good for you. Me going on a stupid daily walk for my stupid mental and physical health. Me the first few weeks of forcing myself to go on daily walks. It gets better though. Look at nature. Look for birds, or bugs, or mushrooms, or herbs, or plants, etc. Take pictures or notes about what you found. As someone whose advice is often just right, what do you feel about plotting out books in advance, or about people who swear that it is the only correct method? That's just right, too. And you'll probably need some kind of a plot, even if it's just, she'll go through the door into the other world, and she'll meet the other mother, and then she'll come back, and then she'll have to go back again and sort things out. It's not automatic writing, but how much detail you need and what you invent as you go is going to change. What I don't enjoy doing is plotting too tightly, because it feels like I'm too constrained by something past me decided. I would rather feel I was collaborating with past me, and throwing balls in the air for future me to catch. Nobody who says, this is the only way to write, 
is ever telling you the truth, unless they add, for me at least, at the end of their sentence. Seventeen-year-old NASA intern discovers a new planet on his third day. The seventeen-year-old! Every scientist at NASA. I don't get to name the planet. My brother had the idea of calling it Wolftopia, but I think TOI-1338B is sufficient. King, I think it is not fucking sufficient at all. Wolftopia or bust. Also, Wolftopia is gorgeous, by the way. Wolftopia is nearly the size of Saturn and orbits two stars that closely orbit each other. This is the best planet! Wolftopia. Sorry, what other name? There's no other name. One time, I went through the Taco Bell drive-thru, and when I tried to order a Baja Blast, I said, Mountain Booba, and then I just left. Couldn't recover. <laughs> a friend of mine once went to order a beefy bean and cheese burrito, but ordered a Bidu Bidu instead. <laughs> and I think of it every time I go to Taco Bell. Oh no. Mountain Booba. <laughs> Bidu Bidu. <laughs> Those are so silly. You know the biggest loss of the decline of physical media and the rise of streaming? DVD special features. I love you DVD commentaries. I love you making of documentaries. I love you behind the scenes footage. I love you bloopers. I love you deleted scenes. I love you silly little videos of the cast dicking around. Yeah, I really miss those. Let's hear it for 100% platonic love. Friends, both in person and online, who remind you how fucking fun and exciting and beautiful the world can be. Siblings and cousins, and sometimes parents or grandparents, or aunts or uncles who stick by you and support you when you're feeling low. Strangers who show you unexpected kindness, or to whom you have showed the same. Artists you'll never meet, whose work helps you better meet yourself. All too often, pop culture tells us that the only satisfying ending is one neatly tied up with a romantic bow. But there are a million ways to love out there, and a lot of them are really fucking great! Love is love is love. It doesn't need to have flowers and fucking to be love. I like the found family trope as much as the next person, but it really irks me to see so many dynamics forced into replicating the nuclear family. That's not even an original take. Other people have said it. It just bugs me in particular, since I really hate it when this dynamics results in uneven emotional labor between characters who should be equals otherwise. Also, trying to shove characters into the dad role or this is the older brother figure completely erases the ever fascinating dynamic of there are no words to describe what we are to each other, we just know there is love. Like that's the good shit. Relationships that are just a little bit of everything. I am in love with you. You can decide what that means. Me rambling. We need to go back to using sailing ships full-time, like immediately. Yes, it would take longer to get places, but the aesthetic is unmatched. Like, there is nothing sexier than this. Can't wait for OP to get scurvy. Are you under the impression that the ships themselves are what caused scurvy? Weren't those ships used for colonizing India and the slave trade? Once again, do you think this is the fault of the ships themselves? Tumblr users will try to make any ship problematic. When people are like, the Hunger Games just stole the plot of Battle Royale. Like, listen, everything steals from the plot of everything. The Lion King is just furry Hamlet. Westworld is Jurassic Park, but sexier. Lost is edgy Gilligan's Island. There are no original stories, and the only good piece of media is Jennifer's body. Michael Crichton wrote Westworld and Jurassic Park, though, so he just pirated himself. Michael Crichton keeps trying to tell y'all about the evils of capitalism impeding on the progress of science. When will y'all listen? Maybe he just doesn't like theme parks. Michael Crichton in line for a roller coaster at Six Flags. Fuck this. Michael Crichton, height. Six foot nine. Jesus Christ, that's the height at which every roller coaster and dark ride is a decapitation threat. I learned so much on this website.
making memes on Photoshop, making memes on Paint, making memes on Snapchat, drawing memes, lining up a piece of paper with the teacher's slideshow and taking a photo. Is this the meaning of Ascended? This is some next level shit right here. He mastered making memes. He went beyond the generic expectations of us, the plebeians of the internet, and succeeded to go above it as a show of his true talent and power. Brilliant work. Blowing minds right there. This, my friends, is the meaning behind the saying, think outside the box. Literally. Growth is pausing as I go to open Twitter and thinking, actually, we don't need to do that. And yet, here you are on Tumblr. The difference is that Twitter is like being actively hit in the head with hammers, whereas logging onto Tumblr is like being given a hammer and expected to hit my own head with it, which I do. Me making food for myself. Why must I be subjected to the torture of maintaining this mortal flesh? When will I be free of the trials of Sisyphean mundanity? Me making food for someone else. Yay! Yippee! Woo! Yeah! Hooray! Yahoo! Hurrah! Yeehaw! Woo! One is literal torture, the other is my love language. That's why I try to think of cooking food for myself as a love language. For myself. Like a self-care thing. It helps. Sometimes. I love you. You need to make a fucking profile. My favorite thing about this post is all the people who chose to use the default icon defending themselves in the notes. Like, no, stop it, just put a picture up. I added a hat and a mouth. Loving this energy. Autism creature. They can suck on my cylinder. <laughs> Mine is JPEG compressed. I've messaged support several times with no luck. I made sure mine wasn't centered. Mine's mouse drawn, all right. I gave mine a little friend and changed the colors. Mine turned into a biblically accurate one. Wipes tear. They learn Tumblr culture so fast. The spite, the malicious compliance of it all. I'm so proud. Like, there comes a point where you think something is fundamentally wrong with you, and then it turns out it's just Friday, and you haven't washed your hair in three days. And maybe you're also just a little lonely, and the combination of all three of those things is whittling a hole into your chest every time you breathe, but also the sun's up, and you've survived everything so far, so you'll survive this too, even if it hurts, even if you have to survive it, many times. Girls will journal post because their journals are somewhere else. It'll be okay, it'll be okay, it'll be okay. This is okay to reblog. I don't know what this is, except for a pep talk. Nothing is wrong with me, I'm just naming emotions and they'll be felt, and if they stick around for ages, I'll go get some help, but it'll be fine. Tumblr users. I hate TikTok, it's the worst. Every post of a TikTok video. 12,746 reblogs, 45,094 likes. Yes, but the experience of occasionally seeing a curated by my homies TikTok vid on my dash is so violently different from the endless stream of scrolling through algorithmic video content. I crave variety. What is my social media experience without walls of text interrupted randomly by videos of ducks and pictures of weird vegan brownies? Every TikTok that appears on my dash has gone through, at minimum, two layers of human peer review. I think one of the funniest things ever is how many rock and metal bands are just four or five identical white dudes with long brown hair parted in the middle. Like, they've gotta be cranking these dudes out in a factory at this point. They don't even have to be in the same genre. You can find them anywhere. They're like some kind of metal fungus. These are all different bands. The metalheads all look like this too, so you can't even tell the fans apart from the bands. I would love to argue with this, but you will never fucking believe what I look like. Let me guess. 